Nima. Nima, like many communities similar in architecture, population density, culture and values across the globe, have earned some infamous reputation in their host cities. From the shanty towns of Cape Town and Rio de Janeiro to the slums of New Delhi and the ghettos of New York, these communities, however the lifeblood of their cities, a colony of the working and struggling middle classes and a testament of the neglect over time by the city administrators and government. Nima is very much a part of the whole of the capital city Accra as much as it is a community on its own standing. Nima is a metaphor, a myth, and in equal measure, a stereotype, a word used to arguably connote negativity in the psyche of Ghanaians. This is the story of the over 53,000 people who call this place home. Though there is no agreed story of the origin of Nima, two schools of thought exist. That the community founded some 186 years ago may have gotten its name from two Ga words corrupted over time, Ni for king and Mang for city, meaning city of the king. The other being that the name Nima might be from the Arabic word Nema, which means blessings. The irony, however, is that Nima is anything but the city of the king, except perhaps being home to the current president of the republic, Nana Rodanko Kufuado, who has called this community home since his childhood or playing background to the presidential palace, the Jubilee House. Nima is neither anything close to a blessing as the Arabic name might suggest. If anything at all, the community is viewed stereotypically as a den of miscreants and perceived with prejudice. Nima came about since around in the 30th, 30th when Malafuta acquired the land. Some of the tribes, such as like Kadu, Fulani, Wangara, Zabaruma, came and started the Nima. It's a, just a small area. Then during the Second World War, when the Americans came and settled at the Burma camp, then people, because of uh, business, the work, people rushed and developed Nima within 10 to 15 years, then the area developed. Every tribe in Ghana is in Nima. And we, are, we live coexistence. There's no any differences. Nima. Yeah, it's mostly Muslims and also Christians. Now the Muslims are more, but we are mixed up with the Kwaus, the Ewes, and all. We are all together here. And Nima is, I think, Nima is the heart of the Zongus. And Nima is a peaceful place. Starting off as a predominantly Muslim community in 1836, Nima played host to traders, mostly Muslims from across the country and sub-region. It is no surprise, therefore, that the community has one of the largest markets in the capital, Accra. Known locally as Kaswa Mamudu, it is one of the largest and busiest markets in Accra and is a great destination for spice traders, lovers and enthusiasts alike. The market has existed almost for as long as the Nima community, housing traders from across the region every Wednesday, the big market day, which sees the market swamped by traders selling grains, cereals, spices, vegetables, and livestock. It's a business center too. It's a very big place for business, if you could see. And our fleet, you could see banks are from Nima Roundabout to Accra School. You could see banks, and it's a peaceful area. But that is not all Nima provides. Though considered one of the oldest and largest Zungu communities, Nima has over the one and a half century of its existence evolved into a melting pot. Christian, and now we are Muslim.
We are all one in this market. And to me, living here toughens you up. We live together in harmony and learn from each other. Nima is also host to one of the largest working class in the heart of the capital. Affordable rent, perhaps being an underlining factor. These individuals are a great source of help in the city, the Indian driving commerce and life itself. From courier service providers, masons, plumbers, tailors and seamstresses, hairdressers, commercial drivers, traders and hawkers to the majority of Okada service providers. Nima is also home to several cooking pots that serve the city's hungry in and out of the community. Many of the city's delicacies from breakfast to supper and the meals in between are prepared in the slums of Nima from the house of Koko and Kose to the early morning Wachi and to Zafi. I never forget you all the hustle be real. Let's make the dollar. My life in Nima, my life in Nima. Michigan Nima, life in Nima. My life in Nima. Be shot a movement, my life in Nima. Like many Zango communities, Nima is stereotyped as radical, violent and opposed to law and order. Due to this, Nima has been used as a synonym for that stereotype, a phrase used as an insult in one breath, and almost in the same vein, an endearing one, ever had the description Nima girl or Nima boy. Anyone from Nima, the, the first point is ABR or a Kronfo Anase Onyadipa. That is the first perception. Maybe Nipanu Onyesa. But that is the first thing that will come into my mind. Telling me you're a Nima boy or you're a Nima girl, that means you are ready for anything. For that side, they make everything look as if they are not good people, you understand? But most of the times it depends what will happen and they know how to deal with situations. Too. Nima boys, they are hard. And even if you grow up from Nima, uh, you have a, um, something like you don't fear anything, I would say something like that. But not all of them uh, are like that. We have heard a lot about them, and so we get scared when they are mentioned. That description is as a result of hooliganism and violence that has been associated with the Nima communities for many years now and the January 18, 2022 violent gang clashes between the Komoji and Bom Bom gangs unfortunately affirmed this stereotype and its accompanying prejudice. And there are a number of you know, gangs around the area. We have Jacob Group, we have Matata, we have the Komoji. A lot of them are from here. However, it goes without saying that Nima is a melting pot of activities, including violence. And you have some coming from elsewhere to perpetrate the violence. But let me also add that these persons are known by the community and they also know the community. And they know these people. But they are refusing to name them because that might jeopardize their security. They are more secured. According to the people I have spoken with on the ground, in the hands of the gangs than even the police. The genesis of the problem is coming from parenting. The second one is leadership. These gangs that you are talking about, who give them those ammunition to fight each other? There are so many, uh, let me say in quotes, influential people who give them these kind of ammunition to fight each other. So in the grounds, everybody wants to be superior. When in fact you know that it's about superiority in businesses and all over. So to me, I think uh, we need to question our leaders and also parenting. Some chiefs and opinion leaders in the community are worried about such violence. The chiefs have no authority. We haven't got the power. We can speak, but we haven't got the weapon to strike. Chief can call somebody arrest, unless the police, if the police doesn't help, the chiefs, how can we do? Can't do anything. 
give the authority, we give the chiefs power to do the police, call the police, arrest this man. I think what is happening, it won't happen. We know each other at Nima, in here in Nima. We have people in Nima now who are not settlers in Nima. They are very new to Nima. If I have a son, you can easily tell him, look, don't do the don't do that. He will stop. That has gone like this. But now, whom are you going to talk to? The parents don't give us support. If somebody is arrested, the police will easily relieve, relieve the person. And he point, he will pinpoint you. Then your life will be in danger. To Kokari Saraka in Zangoki, Nan Namuki Fama da Bimu, Bana Bia Mubani. The chiefs do what they can, but without the help of parents who do not pay attention to their words, all our efforts will be in vain. Viewed exclusively from the lenses of the founding parents and the region of Islam, however, Nima is a well-structured and coordinated community. These community leaders, led by a chief, deliberate on community progress, keeping law and order, and making sure family values and roots are kept alive. We take care of development ourselves as chiefs. If you go around the city, you will see transformation, but not here in Nima. Nima is also home to people of other faiths. The name actually is Nima, um, place for kings. And for the past four years I've been living in Nima here, I can say between us Christians and Muslims, it's very cordial and very very friendly just this new year we sat right here together the muslim community christian community to discuss how best we can help our children in nima grow to become responsible and become prominent people like the presidents today uh, we dialogued we planned we looked at a way forward to make the community an enviable place to live in and so for relationship i can say we're very cordial and we understand each other. I have Muslim friends, and I, I know who, are, who I am, so I know the kind of people I mingle with. So I would say we are good. When, when it comes to Salah, we celebrate it together. When it comes to Christmas, we celebrate it together. We do everything together. So I would say, by all means, one or two people will step on your toes, but it's all about forgiveness. But why is it that despite these, the community seems to see rampant negative reportage or seem to have a negative outlook amongst the public? Nima has since uh, time immemorial uh, been an inner city with this attendant socio-economic and political deficits that is pushing a lot of young people into uncertainty. Uh, not much has changed. However, the only evident change we're seeing is um, uh, the rise in gang activities and um, the fact that now there seem to be serious proliferation of small arms and light weapons uh, in the area. So crime has become sophisticated. Some of us, our behavior, the way we do our things, you realize that everybody have a group. So if you touch me, you touch like 10 people. Some of us, that's how we do our things, that's how we live in the community. So. I don't blame them if the person said you are from Nima, so the perception is in a bad way because the way some of us do our things. It's because maybe some of the houses are too touched close together and many people living. Definitely you have some vices here and there. I'm not saying there are no vices, they are not bad people, um, but equally there are good people. Good. So very soon I believe people will be looking forward to living at Nima and they will not get it. Through it all, a large majority of residents, though well aware of these negative tags, dispel the view and say the Nima community, contrary to popular opinion, is one of law and order. About 50 years ago, when people, uh, Nima people t used to think Nima is a, is a violent, violent center, uh, but 
Now you can't count Nima as one of uh, one of the uh, violence center because when we are conducting election for years now, you can never hear there's a, there's a violence in Nima since 1992 till today. Even though we can't say Nima is 100 percent, everywhere you go, every community you go, there is a good ones, and out of the good ones, you will find some few who are on the other side who are bad. Sazamini de entisa, we say Nima has a yo impenifo atitu be bra. Nima has say no mu sorry and no my Nima be bra so abua Nima. I disagree with that assertion. Nima is a peaceful place, although there are definitely some bad nuts. Jo mu pa, but akwere se inkofo ka krabi na. People have tagged Nima with different perception. They think Nima is full of bad boys, bad gang, smokers, that's people perception. But we living in Nima, born in Nima. Nima is normal, Nima is free. When you live in Nima, you know that the town Nima is very free. Outsiders, that's their perception on Nima. So when they hear about Nima, hey, as for Nima, dear, when you go to Nima, if you do something small, they will be to so so and so and extra stuff. Unknown to the world's eye are groups of equally energetic youth who put their efforts to good causes in the community and challenge the stereotype. Popularly described as mini parliaments or called bases, these unique groups, mostly of young men of the neighborhoods, organize themselves into small age groups, meet almost daily at specific locations to catch up with happenings around them. Issues they discuss range from football, politics, travel, the community, sanitation, corruption, poverty, and other social concerns. From names such as Chicago, Brooklyn, Nebraska, Westside, and others, mostly of cities and places in America, these bases, however, are cited as breeding grounds of gangs. In the past, uh, crime was constricted to the, their base, so, so to speak, um, Nima residents perpetrating crimes against Nima residents. But now uh, they've expanded their scope. Uh, people who are not resident in Nima come to Nima and solicit uh, the services of uh, young men and women here. We keep on uh, militarizing our approach when uh, there are certain fundamental issues that we could have actually addressed, which would deal a sustainable blow to crime in the area. And one of it is youth unemployment. You see a lot of young people sitting, sitting at the trees, uh, sitting at uh, so-called unconstitutional parliaments. Uh, they have nothing doing. The young men that sit at these bases on a daily basis disagree with that assertion. They say some of these bases have respectable people, including lawyers and doctors, although a good number of them are unemployed. What's the basis? I'm finding after watching society. No, what's the basis? Nana, there are a lot of different bases in this neighborhood. It has its own advantages. But mostly, you see some of us here because of unemployment. You perceive that maybe if you are living in Nima, you are not educated, you live a rough life and all that. But it's not true. We have doctors, as we are seeing these people behind me. Some of them are doctors, some of them are entrepreneurs, a lot, engineers. We have a lot of people in Nima. So in Nima is a mixture of um, people living together, as I earlier said earlier on. So it's a very interesting place to live. But it's just that people have a wrong perception about Nima. But when they come to live in Nima, you know that there are a lot of people, loving people to live with. Kasa, I know so many people. If you say, "Be the attorney, be brave," "Be uncrofo," "Be brave," "Ewo." 
Sitting at these bases have helped a lot of young men. This is where a lot of us get our ideas, and some of us have jobs. Slums by their outlook seem like parasites, social organisms that feed on the host cities, leaving its landscapes scared and sometimes infesting it with the diseases of vices and pollution that takes resources and efforts to cure. As much as some of these views are true of slums, they are an integral symbiotic piece of the city puzzle, the lifeblood of the city. The problem with drugs in Nima or in Utah crowd, see, is caused by the laziness of our people to go and work. And also by people who think they can look for money at the easy way. And then the responsibility that lies on the government, that the government is not taking, taking care of that responsibility. That causes this kind of uh, menace in our society. When a person takes a drug, he doesn't know what to do, just to do whatever he wants. So those drugs, we have to look for where those drugs are coming from. And we've had some information. You will not even expect that these are the people who are selling them. So when we are able to the municipal assembly to the government, if they can block those things and it will help. The ghettos you find in Nima today, the majority you see there, they are not from Nima. They come from, they come from far places. But because Nima, uh, 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 those areas in Nima is a ghetto that they can come and, and get something to, to to smoke or some kind of drugs or whatever can be taken. So that is why they come there. But most of them, they are, from, they are not from Nima. Mm -hmm. We are trying to make sure we dismantle the ghettos. The ghettos of Nima is where some of these young men find solace. Though they live in different parts of Nima, they usually meet up in the ghetto to hustle and look for ways to survive. The youth here at the Bobo Ghetto are very aware of the perception people have about them. Me, not so join you like kind of boy. So the buy me, buy and children enough to be the cow. Ah. I prefer being labeled a Nima boy because it is not like we just get up and fight. We support each other, that's all. She intention on this sound. Ah. Na tambea, make it a fear. Me the get here, we just no name me. Now in support, in the shmuko do shim for the man. We be catch you so boy. You see I'm not for be what they make buy 50 Ghana. If someone calls us to fight, even for 10 cities, we will go, because that is how we feed ourselves, whether we have to use knives or whatever. It's been a very long time that Nima has been given a bad reputation because of some previous acts they far way back. That reputation has set a perception on Nima for so long. From our mistakes, we learn our correction. And if you don't make mistakes in life, you are not a human being. While the spelling misconceptions that ghetto youth are the perpetrators of criminality in the community, they want more to be done in creating employment opportunities. <laughs> We have all learned a trade, but we are unable to put it to use to feed ourselves. Our youth is not easy. They have their own choice of work or their own choice of job. When you give them a job, 
they will decide not to do. What worries them a lot is money. At first time, they will ask you, how much are they going to pay them? They have to be interested in the job before their money. If you are too interested in their money, then the job, you cannot do it. And as a youth, if you are selecting a job, you have to start from somewhere before you reach somewhere. The arts and entertainment industry is often seen as a shortcut out of poverty for many youths in the slums. Nima is a budding place for wannabe musicians. Their inspiration perhaps being one of Ghana's most prolific music group, VIP. Formed in this house, the VIP music group were proud of their roots displaying the Nima community in their music videos and hosting yearly concerts at the Salah Fests. They live a normal life. They don't disturb anybody. If it's Salah, you think this place is a Muslim house. Everybody is coming here. Then they used to sing, they used to dance. Because of their group, everybody knows that this man is a very good place. The success of VIP has paved the way for many budding music talents. But unlike VIP, most of the youth have turned to dancehall music. Dancehall is seen as a conduit to express their frustration with the system and speak truth to power. Ali Musa, known by his stage name Jadon Spice from the Bobo Ghetto, is one of such budding talents. One other activity that is at the very heart of Nima is football. The community has produced great football stars, including Majida Shimero and Mohamed Kudus. As you can see now, you can see some are playing right now. I go along, along Nima will be to find the boy. Sometimes they play on the streets, so that's where you get them from the streets. And Nima too, you know Nima, we know how to do everything. We are good in everything. And football, you can you no know, say Mohamed Polo from Nima, and Nima, we are good in soccer. All these notwithstanding, Nima has deep-rooted issues that need urgent attention. The issues of security and order are top of that list. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Nima and many slums like it are as a result of the collective action and inaction of society. A society that looks on when its underprivileged children struggle to accommodate and fend for themselves with no guidance and intervention. Soon, these slums become unmanageable as grades cost to their host cities despite their limited benefits. But how do you transform a community almost two centuries old from the outside as is always the political promise? Perhaps empowering the younger generation through education and job opportunities will gradually turn a slum into a neighborhood of the future. Aisha Yakubu Halid TV3 News.